What's up, YouTube? Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube. And so many people thought Yu-Gi-Oh! was a non-investable game. So many people said it's a niche market. It's never, ever, ever, ever going to be an investable asset. So many people said it's all about Pokemon. It's all about Magic the Gathering, but Yu-Gi-Oh! because it has so many reprints, there is no way that Yu-Gi-Oh! cards will ever take off in price. I mean, it's it's just a joke. Yu-Gi-Oh! cards? Yu-Gi-Oh! cards? You know, isn't that just the, the show back was a one-hit wonder, a one-year wonder? I mean, come on. Yu-Gi-Oh!'s been dead now for five or ten years. Yeah, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! No way. The people buying this stuff, the people paying a grand for a Blue Eyes White Dragon, they're out of their minds. They are out of their minds. Oh, what a joke Yu-Gi-Oh! is. The people that think it's an investable asset. <laughs> I'm just gonna laugh and buy my Pokemon Magic the Gathering cards and watch them lose their money. What a joke. And so we fast forward to today, where Yu-Gi-Oh! now is finally getting some big-time recognition. Is it monumental? Absolutely not. Is it very, very exciting to see from a Yu-Gi-Oh! fanatic? I say, absolutely. You know, because it's one of those things where the consensus a few years ago was, Yu-Gi-Oh cards are, for the most part, worthless, you know. The stuff is mass-produced. The stuff is trash. We have seen Yu-Gi-Oh's growth exceed that of Pokemon, exceed that of Magic the Gathering exponentially in just the last six months. Blue Eyes White Dragon. A card that was selling for about 1000 maybe 2000 six months ago, is now hitting about $5,000. Blue Eyes White Dragon boxes that for a long time a lot of people said were overvalued at about three grand, now hitting about five to six grand. Okay. Metal Raiders boxes hitting about 1.7 thousand. Metal Raiders singles. Hitting close to a thousand dollars for some for two secret rares for Gate Guardian and Thousand Dragon. That's a, that's a grand, you know. And it shows that even while the game is nowhere near as popular as it was, it shows that people are still paying the big money for the old vintage collectibles. And even more important than that, Pokemon has, as of late, flatlined. So what's happening here? Well, my opinions of this. Why is Yu-Gi-Oh! rising so much? Well, it's very clear that Pokemon was the hot thing. You know, there was that trend upwards, that trend we were seeing for so long. And it kind of, obviously, like anything, has to come down eventually. And what's going on with Yu-Gi-Oh! right now will come down, or at least flatline. We have to understand that, right? Um, but with Pokemon, many Pokemon collectors started to see the big time prices of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and say, they say, oh, I remember that. I, I want to pick up some, some poke, uh, some Yu-Gi-Oh now because I've, I've already completed and fulfilled some of my Pokemon stuff. And guess what? Some of the Pokemon stuff's getting way too expensive. I can't afford $15,000 for a Shadowless PSA 10 Charizard. Let me buy a Blue Eyes for a grand. And let's keep in mind here, Pokemon's current offering of products is horrendous. It's reprint central. It, it, there's zero value. I mean, Pokemon's current offerings of, of products, the X and Y and, and onwards, the current stuff, mass-produced trash in terms of value. I, I mean, that stuff is literally going to be firewood. For the next 10, 15 years, if that, if not even more. So with that, I think a lot of Pokemon collectors 
got a little pissed off. They said, well, why isn't there a first edition printing? Why is it always unlimited? Why are there reprints? Why are they producing millions upon millions of boxes? The only thing that isn't mass produced is the Japanese stuff. And who wants Japanese stuff? Yes, it's cool. But it doesn't cater to the mass audience like the North American stuff does. I mean, let's be honest here. So so people probably say, well, there's nothing new to really buy, you know? I, I, I'm getting a little sick of, of, of what Pokemon's doing. And they say, well, you know what? Because Pokemon's kind of slacking, and they're kind of ruining the current game, and because in the old days when they were black and white, all those boxes shot up because they didn't mass produce the crap out of it. So now they say, okay, let's look at Yu-Gi-Oh. No, oh, I remember Yu-Gi-Oh. Let me look at it. And so they start to get into Yu-Gi-Oh. Now what we're seeing, everybody, folks, we are seeing big-time money being dished out for high-end Pokemon cards. Whether it's first print, second print, wavy, glossy, whatever. People are paying the big bucks. And what is more important than that? If you read the title of this video, I don't know if I'm going to put this in the title or description, but there are major dealers in the industry. Dealers, okay? A little bird told me, a trusted source told me, that a big-time dealer is buying Blue Eyes White Dragon 1st Edition LOBs. Whether it's a PSA 9 or PSA 10, they're buying them up. And this is a store slash dealer that buys and sells millions of dollars of inventory. And they're now getting into it. So we saw a few years ago that PSA graded Yu-Gi-Oh cards, a new thing. You know, a, a shot in the dark. A bunch of idiots doing this kind of stuff. No, no one's going to pay for a PSA 10. Yu-Gi-Oh players are gamers. They're not collectors. And now, and now we see some big-time players buying into this stuff, okay? I've always said that Pokemon King, King, and it will remain that way no matter what happens. Pokemon by far has the mass appeal and the king of the trading card industry in terms of investments or collectibles. Mass, mass exposure to a lot of different people. Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and Magic the Gathering, totally different. Magic the Gathering, what made it so great, in my opinion, was the fact that it was the first of its kind. It was the first trading card game. And you gotta give it props for that. And now all these people that played in the 80s and 90s, they have that disposable income. And Yu-Gi-Oh! came three years after Pokemon. And again, we can all agree that Pokemon is the king. But Yu-Gi-Oh! You have that maturity a bit later. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing that maturity and we're seeing more people get into it with the, with the, with the uh, disposable income. You know? And it is now, if you love it or you hate it, it's now an investable asset. It is. There are major sites, dealers, uh, buyers and sellers, traders in the industry getting in on this. So what I'm saying is, if you think it's still a joke, well, you could just keep thinking that because as prices continue to go up over time, you miss your shot. Now, I get the question. Well, Tim, Blue Eyes White Dragon boxes... You know, they've, they've shot up so much in value. What do you think about this stuff? Should I buy it? I think I should buy it because they've gone up. I mean, and they're just going to keep going up. So I think it's a good idea to, um, to invest in it now before it goes up even further. Well, here's my take on that. They say, do you think boxes are going to go up? Do you think boxes are going to go down? Here's my take on that. Blue Eyes White Dragon boxes saw, are seeing a massive spike. As cards continue to rise, especially Blue Eyes White Dragon, Red Eyes Black Dragon, as they continue to go up the LOB cards, boxes will naturally go up. However, it's important to note, boxes are illiquid. They are not easy to sell 
or or uh, put on the market and, and quick sell it. I mean, you can't. No one's waiting with six grand to just pay you right away. Is it possible? Yeah, but you're gonna wait for your money. So, do I think they're gonna go up? Do I think they're gonna go down? If I was a betting man right now, and I didn't have a box of LOB first dead, what would I do? I would not buy it. And and people are probably, like, what are you talking about? You're so confident about Yu-Gi-Oh! In the, in the card market. What are you saying? You're contradicting yourself. You false prophet. You scam. I would not buy it because... It's buying on a spike. I don't. I don't like to buy on a spike. I. I don't think that that's a smart investment. Could I be wrong? Oh God, yeah. Oh God. Could boxes hit ten grand? Absolutely. Would I bet against it though? Yeah. Yeah, I would because I think there's going to be a market correction eventually, and I'm gonna bet that it's sooner rather than later. Whatever happens economy-wise, I don't even care right at this point. I think. The general market for Yu-Gi-Oh has just exploded. If you're looking to to dump your collection, sell your collection, this might be the time, okay? Because you're going to get a very, very, very high valuation, especially considering past history. So if you were seriously considering beforehand selling your collection, now you might want to get rid of it. Is that to say that the collection won't be worth a lot more down the line now? But I think right now you're getting very good value. Do I think in, in 10, 20 years that the stuff is going to be worth a lot more? Yeah, I do. I really do. I think, you know, we've seen this big incline, and I think what's going to happen is it's going to go dip again, okay? I don't know this, the when it will dip. I don't know how, how low it will go, but I think it's going to dip. And when it dips, it's going to dip and flatline for a long time. Let's look at Pokemon, you know? To be honest... Pokemon's a better buy right now. Pokemon is a better buy than Yu-Gi-Oh! right this second. 100%. It's buying when, when it's not hot. It's that simple. Um, but I think long-term, any of these games, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, barring counterfeiting, barring some sort of technology uh, that, that replicates cards or grades cards... Uh, I, I think they're all safe. I mean, long term, you won't have a problem. But we're certainly seeing massive growth on Pokemon, or not Pokemon, of, of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I love it. <laughs> well, here's the thing, too. You know, we're going to get into a whole bunch of things. You know, this is just a rambling video. So, I, I mean, if you have somewhere to go, if you're going to drive to a... Uh, you know, whatever you, you need to go to. If you want to go to work, feel free, because it's going to be kind of a long one. Almost done, guys, I, I, I promise. But, um, you know, I don't even know. What, what was I? I was referring to um, in the long run, Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I don't know. You know, I think I'm just going to end the video now <laughs> because I'm going to save it for another one. Um, oh, another thing. Live streams coming. Live streams. I want you to tell me what you think. I want to discuss with a bunch of people. I want to have a huge amount of people in these live streams. All right. Until next time, Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 with this nice philosophical discussion of how oh i got it i got it it was people saying oh my gosh these prices these prices of Yu-Gi-Oh cards too expensive too expensive they need to come down because i cannot collect what i want to collect well the glory of Yu-Gi-Oh is you get the same artwork minus the first edition stamp for a, a 50 of the price Yes, would all of us want to own a first edition corrected art Dark Paladin or a Cybersteins Shonen Jump Championship? Yeah, but that's why there's Dark Beginning 2. I don't own a Cyberstein. Of course I want one, but am I complaining that it's three grand? No, no. If I really wanted the card, I would just get the Dark Beginning 2 or wait for an ultra rare reprint, which will come out because the Yu-Gi-Oh! reprints everything. 
So until next time, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube, signing out.